हरि ओम वक्रतुंडकाय सूर्यकोटि सभा निर्विघ्न कुर मे देवा सर्वकार्यु सर्वदा गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुदेव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम टीम पर वेदांत वॉमली वेलकम यू टू से पंचदशी द पवर्फुल वेदांतिक टेक्स्ट ऑथर्ड बाय द ग्रेट वारियर्स सेंट स्वामी विद्यारण्य वी विश ऑल अवर व्यूअर्स एन ऑस्पिशियस आयुध पूजा एंड विजयदशमी द फेस्टिवल मार्क्स द विन ऑफ गुड ओवर इविन फॉर अस वेदांत सीकर्स इट इज अ सेलिब्रेशन द विन ऑफ सत्य ओवर मिथ्या ऑफ ज्ञान ओवर संसारा वी आर नाउ इन द पेनल्टीमेट क्लास ऑफ चैप्टर 7 तृतीय दीपा what an illuminating journey it has been though considered difficult in the beginning some clarity has emerged about who we truly are the bihadaranya shloka has been explained in its entirety and now we are finally beginning to understand what tripti means how does a person with tripti behave what are his thoughts while undertaking worldly actions what are the poor purva pakshi's questions about whether this tripti is permanent or ephemeral Let's cement our understanding of Tripti in today's class. Before we begin today's important class, I request Dr. Divakar to please help us recollect what we learnt in the previous class. Dr. Divakar will also moderate the class today and give his insights on the day's topic. Over to you, Dr. Divakar, sir. Thank you, Mangtesh sir. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namah. We are dealing with the last segment of the Brahmadharanika mantra. 4.4.12. Last segment is the Shariram Anusanjare. Verse 234.2 ends with Shariram Anusanjare, meaning a person with the clear knowledge will not be troubled by the afflictions of the body or the mind. Let's see in the in the example of the light getting reflected in a bucket water. Any defects in the bucket or the water doesn't affect the original sunlight. reflected lights quality depends depends on the reflecting medium which is the water so all the problems of the water and the bucket belongs to them only not the reflected light or the sunlight likewise bucket is our physical body water is the subtle body particularly mind reflected light is the chidabasa our experiences and the sunlight is the original putastha atma so vivichya with discrimination between these four stula sharira sukshma sharira chida basa and sakshi kutastha atma one who always identifies with the sakshi atma and doesn't get afflicted by the troubles of the body and mind this is the clear objectification of an atma while anchoring to the original subject which is the atma which is nothing but the subjectification of atma upon dismissing the ego with the, the clear objectification how does agnani feel in verse 235 uh, he starts to feel ashamed thinks how silly it was to suffer and run away from the false perception of the snake which was never there word used here is anushochati agnani will feel a bit embarrassed thinking how much of suffering happened because of the false identification with the body and mind in the verse 236 it is said that he not only feels a little bit silly for carrying uh, and uh, carrying the self ignorance until now but also deeply regrets as he had done some false as if he had done some false allegations on the real self and therefore as if an atonement or prayas chitta seeks permanent refuge in the sakshi chaitanya atma just an apology for uh, a wrong doing is not enough but one must also atone for it there are two aspects in prayas chitta first is the praya which is the penance or a compensatory act and the other is chitta taking a vow not to repeat the same mistake again traditionally dana upavasa mantra japa are prescribed for prayas chitta 
But it is said that being in the company of satsanga and contemplating and abiding to the self removes all the sins. In verse 240, what does the individual do after realizing the mistake? Individual chidabhasa in ignorance plays around the world of sense objects. But upon gaining the knowledge and through discrimination, meditates upon the Sakshi Atma. That I, the witness, is the experiencer in every experience. With consistent self-meditation, he attains unrestricted selfhood. This is just like a metaphor used here, how a young prince fools around in place like, um, like any child until becoming a crown prince. He then realizes that he will soon be coronated as a king and therefore starts to take the active interest in learning about the duties of a king and starts to emulate the ruling king. This is Chidabhasa emulating Chit. This is the single-pointed contemplation on the Mundaka Mantra. One who knows the truth verily becomes the truth alone. Brahmavid Apnoti Param. This is as if the lower bird in the Mundaka Upanishad tries to imitate the higher bird by destroying its false identity. With complete identification with Chit, will the sufferings of the body and mind go away instantly? Yes, it can in some gnanis. But it is a gradual process of reduction of suffering and eventually getting rid of it for many of us. Um, this is explained in the verses 244 and 245. Just like how the tremors in the mind are felt for a few days or weeks, even after a, after a big earthquake, or the blades of the fan takes time to stop completely, even after switching off the electricity, or an impression of a snake may reappear on a rope in the dim light, even after realizing that it is just a rope, Chida Basa will go through mental afflictions which are situational, even for a gnani. But the FIR, the frequency, the intensity will reduce and recovery will be faster over time. Good news is that Atma Gnanam, the truth, doesn't get destroyed by such lapses. Liberation while living, Jeevan Mukti is not a vow, but it is indeed, indeed the abidance in the truth. As told in the verse 246. In the verse 247 and 8, 10th man example is brought back again to explain the gradual healing from the previous suffering. While becoming overjoyous and getting the self knowledge, the 10th man, out of ignorance that one person may have died, bangs his head to the tree in sorrow and he wails. On realizing that the 10th, 10th man is not missing and that person is indeed himself, he stops banging the head and wailing. Although he has now realized that the wound caused by the banging of the head takes a while to heal, the pain from the wound is easy to handle and bear. This is because of the joy that no one is dead or no one is missing. He is even a little ashamed about his ignorance and causing self-injury. Other example is mother going through labor pains. Those pains are almost forgotten on seeing the smiley face of the newborn baby. So on realizing that I am indeed the chit, Sorrows of Chidabhasa gradually fades away and almost ignored. With this, the Prarabdha Karma is, gra is gracefully accepted and exhausted for the one who has the Jnana Nishta. Wounds of the head banging, labor pain are the metaphors for the Prarabdha Karma. Jnana Nishta will also have pains but no mental sufferings. Problems, illnesses in the body and mind and also of the Karana Sharira cannot be avoided or eliminated. This is called a Jvara. But the identification with the Jvara and suffering mentally because of this, which is called Anujvara, can be totally eliminated. Bhagavan Ramana, Sri Ramakrishna too had Jvara. They had severe symptoms and pains of cancer, but no sufferings, no Anujvara at all. As told in the verse 250, just like the tenth man accepts the self-inflicted wounds and starts to soothe himself by applying medicine, maybe a herbal aushadi, a gnani completely accepts any pains of the body-mind with total objectification of the body and mind and experiences those pains without a shred of resistance. By doing so, prarabdha karmas, which is as a result of law of karma, is accepted and is exhausted till the vyavaharika body-mind body -mind exists. So, an Agnani suffers for even a simpler reversible problems like minor ailments, financial loss or loss of a job, etc. 
because of the subjectification with the problems, whereas Agnana Nishta doesn't suffer even for irreversible diseases like end-stage cancer, death of the near ones, etc. Because of the complete objectification of the problem and the subjectification with the Satchitatma. It is important to note that Gnana Nishta doesn't denounce responsibilities on the body-mind. He, do he does what he has to do, like the 10th man applying the medicines for the head, bang head banging wound but accepts any outcome gracefully as a result of karma paladata. With the verse 251, the sixth stage of spiritual evolution of Chida Bhasa, which is Shoka Nivrati, is over. The final, the seventh stage, which is total contentment, Tripti, is discussed from the verse 252. Any happiness is not a true happiness if it doesn't eliminate the insecurity, if it doesn't last forever. So any contentment, uh, one gets out of sense objects is limited. With Aparoksha Atma Gnana, the contentment one gets is unlimited and such a contented person fosters the feelings that all that has to be done and achieved has been done and achieved. Thereafter, anything to, anything to be done, uh, any duties at home or society is done out of fulfillment, out of tripti. As told by Shri Krishna in uh, Bhagavad Gita 3.22, I have no more duties as there is nothing unattained. Yet I am engaged in the work out of fulfillment as a swadharma, but not for fulfillment. Such a contented jnani, contented with self, the atmanyeva atmanatushtaha, only can look back at his own sufferings prior to attaining jnanam and appreciate more of self-contentment. Such a person doesn't have binding for even routine tasks like sleeping, bathing or eating. Such a Gnana Nishta doesn't judge anyone or, or anything. At the same time, uh, he doesn't get affected by the judgments or opinions passed on to him by the others, be it positive or negative. As the one soaked and saturated in Purnatva, Purnatva Tripti is beyond any imaginations of self or others. Haryo. Now, we continue to study this fascinating Tripti Deepa, the seventh stage, which is the uh, Tripti. Om Sada Shiva Samarambham Shankara Charya Madhyamam Asmada Charya Paryantam De Guru Paramparam. With profound gratitude to all the Gurus, Vidyaranya, particularly Swami Paramarthananda, Tatmananda, Tejomayananda, Anubhavananda Ji. Now we, we move on to today's class. Namah Shankara Nanda Guru Padambu Janmane Savilasa Maha Moha Graha Graseka Karmane For a Gnani, Trupti is not a goal. Goal is only the sixth one, removal of samsara, as Trupti is the next consequence. So this Gnani, how does he behave in the society? What does he do? And this is a section which is covered in this class and in the next class as well. Some of it was covered in the previous class too. In this Theta Pragna portion of the second chapter, Arjuna asked this very important question. How does a Theta Pragna act? He calls this Gnani by three names. Theta Pragna, Sthita Dhi and Samadhisthata. Samadhisthata, Samadhi means Atma, one who is anchored in the Atma. Pragna is the knowledge, one who is anchored in this knowledge, Sthita Pragna. Dhi also means the knowledge, wisdom about the self or the Atma. This section, Swami Paramathananda gives us a, a warning here. He says, when we are measuring or knowing about a Sthita Pragna, it is to evaluate one's own journey. Not One should not use this as a measurement to uh, look at others' progress. This section covers both Sthita Pragna Lakshana as well as the sadhanas needed for those people who are still in this spiritual journey. In this section, we will have our first speaker. We have wonderful speakers today who will um, give out their level best in uh, giving us the clarity of these mantras. Rav Shankar, sir. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Uh, we see this verse uh, in the next slide. And uh, this is the introduction to the previous verse, which will be the beginning of this class. In these penultimate verses of Tripti Deepa, 
the final stage of spiritual journey where we are looking at jivan mukti or tripti it is essential that we refuse the ahankara of a mumukshu we refuse the activity is done as my sadhana we refuse moksha as a goal and a bhakta which has who has the admiration of anatma as vishwarupa should also be refused it is not just enough to refuse this but we must accept nitya mukta atma in the previous uh, slide as we see we must accept nitya mukta atma we must accept all our activities as, as lokakshema sadhana or vishwarupa arpana we must understand that moksha is our intrinsic nation nature and that whatever we do is a nishkama bhakta these would be the characteristics of a atmanishta or a gnana nishta in the next slide we notice this is the verse 260 we have understood and studied all through the uh, tatva bodha and the other uh, texts that shravana manana nididhyasana is done for a extended period of time under a competent guru as a moksha sadhan in this verse very clearly there are four things that we should clarify to understand what is the asambhavana so the pratibandhas are the vishaya bhoga vasanas which are taken away by self control the pramana asambhavana is ref to those who refuse to understand the jiva brahma proof of identity in the upanishads and that needs a shravana which is not only hearing but cognition and vichara of the of the shastras then the prameya gata asambhavana is the doubt which continues about the reality of brahman and that needs manana and of course in the next uh, uh, verse there will be an understanding of the viparita bhavana which is still the doubt because i have an attachment to the jivatma i have an attachment to this body and that needs nididhyasana so uh, in the previous uh, slide we continue to understand that swami virda vidyaranya says that samsaris have this agnana and this agnana this samshaya nivritti is done by manana so pramana asambhavana or prameya asambhavana is a perception and a logical dealing of the anatma however at this stage of tripti deepa i have grasped the vedantic teaching i know the atma vichara i have understood the atma vastu so for me moksha is not a goal moksha is my swarupa and so if i practice manana it is purely for entertainment in the next slide verse 261 viparita bhavana is explained as ahankara based self judgment and then we judge ourselves to say i am not yet liberated i am not a liberated one this self judgment based on ahankara is superimposed on myself it is the samsaris who have to practice nididhyasana i know that i am not the body not the mind not the body mind complex so why should i practice nididhyasana hence shravana is not required manana is not required nididhyasana is not required nothing is required as our teacher often says there is nothing to do and nowhere to go allow anatma to express itself based on the triguna swabhavas so all the gnanis are the same but they allow their anatma to express differently this is the essence of the of this verse 261 hari om thank you thanks a lot dr shankar sir for the very clear explanation of the verse nitya tripta jeevan mukta has no sadhanas to, to do as anubhavananda ji says there is nothing to do nowhere to go for a jeevan mukta but be a conduit be a conduit for all the actions dr timapa sir gives this example of them for a surgeon when they are using an instrument instrument has no feelings instrument has nothing to do with the surgery but it is a surgeon who is using the instrument to do the surgery but can we be the instruments as well can we be the conduits for a jeevan mukta that is a natural process and swami tejo mayananda says 
that because of the long standing vasanas because of the body mind attachment we have the delusion that i am the body mind gives an example a man goes to a psychiatrist and asks i feel like a cat the psychiatrist asks since when he says since i was a kitten so which means these are all there from the very beginning and obviously one who has uh, come to the level of tripti shoka nivritti he has come out of this body mind identification we have the next speaker chetna ma'am will explain the next few verses thank you om shri guru bhyo namaha now shastras uh, tell us that an enlightened person person is one who has learned to disidentify with his body mind sense complex and identify with his higher self the atma now the question that arises is how can such a person function in day to day life don't you need the body mind awareness for vyavahara next slide please so shastras explain this through two factors samanya adhyasa and vishesha adhyasa all living beings without exception have samanya adhyasa it is vasanas we have due to prarabdha it is instinctive with no thinking judgment or conclusion involved it is required for all vyavaharas and does not cause samsara this is that is why animals do not have samsara you may have joy and pain according to your prarabdha or vasanas now the gnani may not have agami or sanchita karma but he also will have prarabdha like all of us that is why even a maha gnani will feel hunger joy and pain so from the standpoint of the body he will continue the vyavahara because of this samanya adhyasa then what causes samsara we'll see that in the next slide samanya adhyasa by itself does not cause samsara but how you deal with it leads to the second factor vishesha adhyasa this is unique to human beings vishesha adhyasa is the cause for samsara and worry it is brought about by deliberate thinking self judgment self conclusion leading to samsara thus samanya adhyasa gives biological pain and vishesha adhyasa gives psychological pain it is biological pain does not cause samsara whereas samsara is caused by vishesha adhyasa only so this is similar to jwara and anujara respectively as discussed in the earlier verses therefore on the next slide vidyaranya says worldly vyavaharas will take place because of this samanya adhyasa so how does the gnani handle these two adhyasas this is where vedanta comes into play vedanta does not and cannot remove samanya adhyasa which is the result of prarabdha but vedanta can remove vishesha adhyasa to gnanam so in the next slide shri vidyaranya says in verse 262 bina api amum viparyasam even without this wrong notion of thinking i am this limited individual the enlightened person would still think as aham manushyaha i am a person during vyavahara why because it is avakalpate it is supported by vasanataha due to conditioning of the mind gathered over a long time so we have been conditioned to think aham manushyaha this creates a vasana which is chira abhyasata deeply established or engraced next slide please so how does this gnani reconcile between aham atma and aham manushyaha for an enlightened person what is absent is the conclusion i am a human being and not the experience of being a human being the teachings of vedanta do not change your experience but they give you knowledge to remove this ignorance of that which makes you suffer but your experiences will continue so in the next slide we'll see that in verse 6, 265 the gnani says that he does not need to meditate at all as he is always focused on his true nature therefore no vyavahara can disturb the fact that i am nitya mukta atma whatever be the condition of the mind let the mind go through its own fluctuations this i am aware of all time and therefore why should i practice meditation is his question if you want you may do it he says so next slide the gnani says in verse 265 vikshepo nasti yasman me 
न समाधिस्तस्तो मा मम विक्षेपो वा समाधिश्व समाधिर्वा मनसः स्याद विकारिन नेक्स्ट लाइव प्लीज यद जीवन मुक्ता प्रोक्लेम्स आई डो नॉट नीड टू डू समाधि बिकॉज फॉर मी विक्षेप नास्ति देर इज नो डिस्ट्रैक्शन वी हैव टू कीप इन माइंड Vidyaranya Swami does not say there is no vikshepa for the mind, but there's but that there is no vikshepa for me, the unchanging consciousness, and that Nani knows himself to be that unchanging consciousness. He is not saying that I have a perfect mind which never gets distracted. Next slide, please. He has a normal mind subject to all kinds of experiences and subject to vikshepa, but the Nani knows that whatever happens in the mind does not affect. me the atma at all that is why he says vikshepa va samadhi va whether the mind is in the state of distraction or the mind is in the state of meditation manasaha syad vikarinaha these are conditions of the mind which is constantly changing whereas the consciousness consciousness is utterly unaffected by the conditions of the mind the gnani continues in the next slide he says even if the mind has a problem of vikshepa i don't look upon the mind's problem as my problem it has nothing to do with claiming my liberation therefore i don't require samadhi abhyasa as a remedy for vikshepa when vikshepa roga is not there why should i practice samadhi then why do the scriptures talk about the need for karma yoga upasana yoga etc next slide please the scriptures have to talk about them as long as i look upon myself as the mind all these are required because when i approach the scripture scriptures i was looking upon myself as a body mind complex but now that i don't look upon myself as this body mind complex how can those instructions be relevant to me therefore the disease called vikshepa or the remedy called samadhi are meant for the mind which is constantly fluctuation fluctuating next slide please so according to swami ji the vichara or thoughts which are the modification of the mind are dependent on three factors they are will based world based and vasana based and we have got limited or no control over these so how how can i control the thoughts completely it is not possible but many of us think that enlightenment enlightenment means attaining mental perfection in the next slide swami ji says that perfecting the mind is a useless proposal we just have to improve the mind a little and then drop it it is like ripening the skin of the banana to peel off easily therefore make the mind better for dropping the identification but not for perfecting perfecting it thank you hari om thank you chetna ma'am another very very nice explanation so for a jeevan mukta for a gnani who is identifying with the guna atita there is no business with any of the gunas we know by nature let's read this in bhagavad gita as well by nature mind has gunas one cannot be without gunas as far as the mind is concerned whereas guna atita atma there is no gunas at all so likewise with the total identification with the gunatita ignananishta will not have any anujwara or the vishesha adhyasa that was very beautifully explained just carrying on from the example of the banana peel in the mahamrutyunjay mantra urvarakam eva bandhanat so we need all the meditations we need all the sadhanas for a mind which is restless an unripened restless mind needs sadhanas when the mind is completely ripened which means the karma yoga upasana yoga and even gnana yoga has done its job there is no business for any sadhanas for a gnana nishta and in the verse 266 there is a word used called anubhava anubhava has two meanings one meaning is anu which is after bhava which means becoming which that the experiences that we get out of interaction with all the sense pleasures using sense organs and there is another meaning that bhava anu means continuous bhava means being that which is always there in every experience pratibodha viditam matam this is that with the nitya tripta 
you know gets anchored to and so one who is anchored in this nitya trupta what is his actions what is his attitude towards any actions will he do any karmas at all what does he think of them we have trivani ma'am who will explain these things trivani ma'am om shri guru bhyo namaha vyavaharo laukiko va शस्त्रियोप्यन्यथपिव मम कर्तुरलेपस्य यथारब्धं प्रवर्ततम् हियर विद्यारण्य सेज सेज दैट अग्नानी विल नॉट डू एनी कर्मा फॉर हिज मोक्षा बट दैट डज नॉट मीन ही शुड नॉट डू एनी कर्मा एट ऑल सेज विद्यारण्य सेज दैट अग्नानीज एक्टिविटीज आर बेस्ड ऑन प्रारब्ध दैट ही हैज प्रारब्ध वासना विल डिटरमिन हिज पर्सनालिटी and according to his inclination or according to swabhava even after gaining nana the body mind complex has its own swabhava determined by prarabdha vasana and this allows the body mind complex to express itself by gnanis engaged in different degrees and different types of activities this can be either laukika or shastriya he says in keeping with the prarabdha vasana which belongs to the body mind complex according to ahankara prarabdha there may be laukika vyavahara or shastriya vyavahara scriptural activities like sandhya vandana panchamahayagnas and all of them will continue when a gnani does panchamahayagna we call it loka sangraha karmas if at all his special prayer is directed towards the loka then that will also be nishkama prayer sometimes it may be a nishiddha karma also therefore anyatha refers to even nishiddha karma that may take place in a situation but if nani does not have ahankara or ragadvesha even if nishiddha karma takes place and if a nani does a nishiddha karma and if he does it without abhimana nishiddha karma will not produce papa for him vidyaranya talks about the seventh stage of the spiritual sadhana which is in the form of jivan mukti or tripti which is born out of entertaining a mindset which is based on vedantic teaching received from the guru one has to adopt change in the mindset instead of looking at himself as mumukshu based on the teaching and claim to be nitya mukta atma all the secular and sacred activities instead of seeing it as one zone moksha sadhana we need to learn to look at them as loka kshema sadhana this is the second important change and the third change in the mindset is to never look forward to moksha as a future event that has to come based on the teaching but to look at moksha as the very swarupa instead of moksha being a sadhya which is connected to future these three fundamental changes have to be brought about then alone gnana yoga begins and a student becomes a gnana yogi then the entire universe including the family including the body mind complex is looked upon as anatma object which belongs to vishwarupa ishvara which is owned and controlled by vishwarupa ishvara and this appreciation and admiration is nishkama bhakti as atma the evil free one the only favor asked for is sarve bhavantu sukhinah this nishkama bhakti is the natural corollary of the change in the mindset and therefore vidyaranya describes the thought pattern of this jivan mukta vyavaharo laukiko va shastriyo va pravartatam let the worldly transactions or religious activities go on at the anatma level at the body mind level कर्म संबंध मम साक्षीपरहित आत्मन नास्ती एंड अलेपस्य इफ आई डोंट हैव कर्म आई डोंट हैव कर्म फल ऑल्सो आई डोंट हैव कर्म फल संबंध आई डोंट हैव कर्म संबंध एज ऑल्सो कर्म फल संबंध कर्म संबंध इज कॉल्ड कर्तृत्व एंड कर्म फल संबंध इज भोक्तृत्व बोथ ऑफ जेम आर नॉट देर फॉर मी अकॉर्डिंग टू माई प्रारब्ध means according to ahankara's prarabdha let the activities go on and when this is the mindset karma cannot produce agami punya or papa any karma done with this mindset does not produce agami punya or agami papa and therefore agnani is jivan mukta the next verse 268 athava krit pratyo pi lokanugraha kamyaya 
शास्त्रीय नैव मार्गेन वर्ते हम का मामा क्षति ही अप तू दिस प्रीवियस श्लोका विद्यारण्य सेड जीवन नुक्ता में चूज टू लिव अ लाइफ एस गवर्न बाय द प्रारब्धा इट्सेल्फ इन दिस श्लोका ही टॉक्स अबाउट एनदर अल्टरनेटिव a jeevan mukta may deliberately entertain a non binding desire to help the world by taking to shastriya marga even though he does not require any benefit through these sadhanas but for loka loka sangraha kama kama by doing or not doing no difference will be made for him in his life neither does he require chitta shuddhi as he has chitta shuddhi which is why he has gained knowledge he does not seek knowledge also he does not seek liberation also but still purely for the sake of blessings the world he may deliberately follow certain disciplines like regular japa etc he might do so to set an example standard to the world therefore vidyaranya says athava even though this gnani is absolutely fulfilled lokanugraha kamyaya a non binding desire a gnani can entertain and that desire is loka anugraha blessing for the world therefore shastriya naiva margena he may rigorously follow the shastriya achara anushthanam etc even though he does not have to follow any achara anushthanam therefore shastriya naiva margena that is why a paramahamsa sanyasi in the initial stages takes a danda to indicate the discipline that he takes unto himself and the sanyasa ashrama has its own disciplines like certain parayana upanishad upanishad parayana bhashya parayana hamsa gayatri pranava avritti etc japa is prescribed all these rules and regulations come along with sanyasa ashrama represented by danda and the shastra after gaining nana gives him the option he is allowed to renounce the danda also danda visarjana thus a person may hold on to achara anushthana belonging to the ashrama or he may not do that also but the general convention is that if the gnani is in the society he follows all of them otherwise the society may be mild this is the convention not con compulsion therefore a gnani decides to follow all the disciplines then he asks what is going to be a problem for him both do not make any difference as far as his purnatva is concerned there is no loss because of doing anything we have to remember the gita shloka naiva tasya krute nartho na krute neha kaschana na chasya sarva bhuteshu कस्चिदर्थव्य पाश्रय मम कति वॉट इज द ज्ञानी गोइंग टू लूज बाई डूइंग दिस ऑन दि अदर हैंड द वर्ल्ड इज गोइंग टू बेनिफिट बिकॉज द ज्ञानी विल बिकम एन एग्जाम्पल अ रोल मॉडल फॉर द वर्ल्ड हरिओम थैंक यू thank you very much that answered a lot of questions about whether a agnananishta does any actions any karmas at all anything that agnananishta does is for loka kalyana vasudeva kutumbakam i am nija paro veti gananam lagu chetasam udara charitanam tu vasudeva kutumbakam this is a mantra from from maha upanishad udara charitanam tu one who sees everything as a manifestation of the god there is no differentiation at all for that person every everybody everything in the world universe everything is one family alone so fantastic very well said trivedi ma'am next uh, speaker is apeksha apeksha please hari om va purva agdhishu nirbandha karmano na tu sakshuni ज्ञान न साक्ष्य लेपत्वे निर्बंधो नेतरत्र ही विद्यारण्य स्वामी जी हैज टॉकिंग अबाउट द माइंडसेट ऑफ अ कर्म योगी व्हिच इज ऑलवेज प्री ऑक्युपाइड विद अनात्मा ड्यूरिंग द डे और द नाइट एनी एक्टिविटी दैट यू सी एज सून एज द अनात्मा और द बॉडी माइंड कॉम्प्लेक्स थॉट्स कम्स इन टू पिक्चर अहंकारा कम्स अप as soon as अहंकारा कम्स अप द जीवा कम्स अप व्हेन जीवा कम्स अप द ममकारा 
follows and when mamakara follows a group of unit or family comes into picture and as soon as family comes into picture for this karma yogi then fear and anxiety also follows and this jiva or the sansari becomes vulnerable how because then this world becomes a threat right this jagat that we are talking about becomes a threat and that the threat can come from anywhere so the jiva requires a police station or ishvara or a blessing from a ishvara to help him protect him from the threats of this worlds which are unknown so that's how the mindset of the karma yogi is but what is the difference between karmi and ajivan mukta it's the change in the mindset which can only happen through continuous practice and lot of internal internalization is required for that we'll talk in the upcoming slides about that but let's see what is the mindset the mindset of a karmi focuses on anatma which is the body mind complex and jivan mukta focuses on i am nitya mukta atma i am already free i don't require any sadhanam for moksha so the jivan mukta atma is in the present moment it does not require does not look into future to gain anything it does not look in the past about anything the path from karmi to jivan mukta so what is that path let's look at it first of all for a karmi or for anyone jiva you have to watch your inner dialogue whether you are karmi or jivan mukta will be revealed to you because you can see the mindset if you know body mind complex thoughts are there if anatma thoughts are preoccupied in your mind always then obviously you are a karmi and for a jivan mukta jivan mukta it's like i am already liberated the mindset once the mindset is revealed you have to identify the dominating mindset that we talked about in the previous slides and then you have to change those internal dialogues we look into it how do you change those internal dialogues in the upcoming slides so establish the new mindset for a gyani pravarti or nivritti makes no difference because what now what is a pravarti pravarti means engagement in activity nivritti means withdrawal from activity like meditation type of life gyani leads depend upon his prarabdha vasna we will see why for a pra gyani pravarti or nivritti makes no difference because he knows i am already that i am already liberated so type of life that a gyani will lead will depend whether he is a sanyasi or whether he is in a grihastha ashram that will depend upon his prarabdha vasna only for a sadhaka pravarti becomes relevant at some time and nivritti at some other times does a gyani become a karmi karmi when he is involved in activities Super, superficially a gyani appears to be a karmi externally a gyani and a karmi might look exactly the same but karmi or gyani is not determined not on the action or external looks but the internal mindset and the internal dialogue that takes place in the mind gyani is a gyani and he is never a karmi what is the difference between gyani and a karmi so now you might look at these two pictures right they look almost the same externally they look alike but internally they look different because the above is the eastern ocean photo and the below is the western ocean photo so both of them are different similarly gyani and karmi also looks alike but internally they are different karmi the preoccupation of the thoughts is with anatma and sansari jiva is dominant even though the sakshi is within but sakshi is far and kept away behind because they have not studied the internal chattering or the internal dialogue that takes place in the mind and it, they have not deliberately replaced them we'll talk about this line because this is very important why is the sakshi far and kept up behind a curve in a karmi because he or she has not studied the internal chattering and has not deliberately replaced them how to change the mindset right you must be wondering one mice must be wondering so let's look at this example that is given below on the left you will see that there's a untreated grass and on the right there's a treated grass how will how does this happen let's see for a karmi to become a gyani they have to one 
they have to deliberately replace the inner chat train. They have to change the mindset. It's a constant process. I mean, like you can see in this grass right now, if you don't clean it every day, it's going to be untreated and it's going to look like this. If you want the grass to be very clean and the mindset to be changed, then you have to daily, you know, daily, you have to clean it, clean it, clean it. And it's a daily activity. Similarly, for a karmi also, it's a constant process from waking till deep sleep. You have to deliberately replace the inner chattering of your mind. Not change just by, you cannot change your thoughts just by reading Vedanta. But deliberately change it like weeding a garden and planting fruit trees. So you have to deliberately replace your inner chattering with the right mindset of a jnani. Jnani has done a lot of struggle and through consistent Shravana Mananan Nidhi Dhyasan, the struggle to actually deliberately observe the internal chattering of their mind and replace it with the right mindset that I'm already liberated. I'm already, I've already attained moksha. Once you do that, you will change your mindset. It's a long, continuous struggle and a long process, but it does take place. So deliberate replacement of internal chattering needs to take place for one to change from a karmi to a gyani. Shloka number 7.276. Pravartri ne upyukta ha chen nivritti ko pyuchyate bhode hetu nivritti shred buddh bhutsayam tathe taraha. Here, Purva Pakshi has raised a question to Vidhiranya Swami. Why should Jnani be involved in worldly activity? As per him, his visualization of a Jnani is that he should just meditate, he should be a withdrawn sannyasi and grow beard. Grow beard. Since Jnani already has attained Jnana, he does not require Jnani Yogyata. So, Pravati is not required for him. So, he should just be sitting as a withdrawn sannyasi as per Purva Pakshi. So Vidyaranya Swamiji answers here, as per him, Pravati and Nivriti are both irrelevant for a jnani. For him, there is no benefit of either sadhanas. He lives his life as per his prarabdhavasana. So whether he is a withdrawn sannyasi or he is in grass ashram will depend upon his prarabdhavasanas. So Put Pakshi, where he, he says, if Pravati is not required, then Vidyananda Swami says, why is Nivritti also required? Why should a jnani withdraw from the society and sit in meditation? So Purva Pakshi here says, meditation is necessary for a jnani because it is a means of knowledge. So Vidyananda Swami ji answers here. See, Pravati is Jnani Yogyata Sadhana. Pravati is required for Jnani Yogyata Sadhana and Nivritti is required for Jnana Sadhana. So if the jnani doesn't need jnana yogyata, as per Purva Pakshi, the jnani doesn't need jnana yogyata. So as Vidyananya Swami says, the jnani also doesn't need jnana because he already has jnana. He knows, he knows and he knows in his mind that he's already liberated. He is aware of that. So both pravarti and nivrati becomes irrelevant for a jnani as per Vidyananya Swami ji. So, he lives his life as per his prarabdha vasana, but pravarti and nivriti will not be relevant to him. Hari Om, sir. Thank you, Apeksha, for another nice explanation. Again, Samatvam, going back to the Sita Pragna verse, Dukkesha Nudvigna Manaha, Sukeshu Vigata Spraha, Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha, Sita Deer Muni Ruchyate. So, here, in these previous verses, whether Ignana Nishta prefers a reclusive lifestyle or whether he prefers an active lifestyle, whether it is Pravrutti or Nivrutti, Ignana Nishta doesn't bother at all because he's already complete, he's already Purnam. Just as told in the uh, Bhajagovindam, Yogaratova, Bhogaratova, Sangaratova, Sangavihina. Yes, yes, Brahmani Ramate Chittam Nandati Nandati Nandityeva. One who is anchored at all times in the in the Kutastha Atma. He is always in Tripti. There is always Purnatvam. So it doesn't matter whether he is in company of somebody or not. It doesn't matter, matter whether he is in a Pravrutti or a Nivrutti Marga. Now we go to the next speaker. 
Panaga, please. Harihyum Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. We are now discussing how a gnani should lead his life. The Purva Pakshi asks if the gnani can indulge in worldly activities. If yes, does he suffer samsara? Or should he always stay in meditation lest he forget that he is a gnani? To this, Vidyaranya Swami has this to say. Na vidya na pitat karyam bodham badhi tumarhati puraiva tattva bodhena badhi te te ubheyataha. Ignorance and its effects are not capable of negating the knowledge of gnana. Since with the dawn of Gnana, both of them are already negated. Next slide. Agnani does not require either Pravritti Marga, a life of karma, of karma yoga, to, to gain Gnana Yogyata, or the Nivritti Marga, a life of withdrawal and meditation, leading to Gnana. Agnani has no goal or sadhana, either worldly goals or moksha. But an ignorant person has goals and strives to attain them. But just like we do not need to do any sadhana to know and claim that we are humans, Agnani easily and naturally claims that he is a Nitya Mukta. He can choose to lead a lifestyle of either Karma Yoga or Gnana Yoga depending on his Swabhava. Pursuing worldly goals does not distract him or unsettle his status as a Gnani. He is clear about what is Sat and what is Asat. Anything he does or doesn't do cannot affect his Viveka. Vidyaranya Swami himself is a shining example of a Gnani being fully immersed in the world. He helped establish the mighty Vijayanagar Empire. Next slide. Now, now let us understand why a Gnani's conviction is so strong. Vidyaranya Swami says, Gnana cannot be negated by anything because Gnana has been given by the Lord himself. It is a Paurusheya. Secondly, no worldly pramana, worldly object, that is activity, experience or emotion can negate this knowledge because knowledge by its very definition has negated Anatma. Just like the experience of the flat earth, never challenges the knowledge that the earth is perfectly round. Similarly, my experience of a stationary earth never threatens the knowledge that the earth is in fact spinning. Similarly, our experience of the worst form of sorrow or pain cannot challenge the valid knowledge that I am only the witness of all my thoughts and emotions. Hence, Vidyaranya Swami asserts that ignorance and its effects cannot negate knowledge. Let us move on to verse 281. <laughs> the translation is, in the beginning, the knowledge of truth, having fought with ignorance, which was at the height of its power, being helped by a variety of its own products, one. How can that knowledge, firmer now, be negated? Next slide. Verse 281 is an inspirational verse. Vidyaranya Swami dramatically presents the glory of knowledge. Here, the student's mind is the battlefield, and the guru is trying to create a warrior called Gnana, to fight avidya, the millions of doubts, viparita bhavana and vasanas like I am a samsari, I am this body and mind, I am this, I don't have gnana yogyata or I can never attain moksha. The gnana warrior through repeated shravana, manana and nididhyasana defeats avidya. The battle is long but finally knowledge wins and we become gnanis. There are no doubts in my mind. Whatever be my worldly experiences, my knowledge is now firm and unshakable. Vidyaranya Swami asks, how can this knowledge be threatened by the defeated soldiers of samsara? Therefore, he concludes that we don't have to protect Gnana. Established, it is permanent. Worldly thoughts and experiences will continue to exist, 
but Nana is so strong that he easily defeats Avidya and Vidya always wins. The next slide, let us remind ourselves what this knowledge is. Firstly, that Brahman alone is Satya. I alone am Satya. I am Nitya Mukta Atma. Secondly, the entire creation, all the transactions, the two Shariras, Kartritva, Bhoktritva, Pramatritva, Prarabdha, all of them are Mithya. Thank you. Hari Om. Thank you, Tanaga. That was a brilliant explanation. Very reassuring verses by Swami Vidyaranya. Once the Gnanam is anchored and established, nothing can threaten, nothing can negate this knowledge. Once we know that the space has no color, even if our eyes tell us that it is blue, we are not going to believe this. Yes, it is blue at one level, but in reality, there is no color at all. Another example taken is, when a live rat couldn't kill the cat, what will a dead rat do? Again, talking about how this mighty Nanam defeated ignorance through all the sadhanas. And this Nanam is established after defeating all of that. For a Gnana Nishta, how can any of these disturbances come back and disturb? Absolutely nothing. So we all need to be Gnana Nishtas. Again, just to reiterate, Gnanam is the knowledge that I am Brahman which has no defects at all. But Gnana Nishta, this knowledge is available for me at every time, in every transaction and helps me remain tranquil and with poised mind in every situation. Are you? Thank you. Thank you, dear speakers and Dr. Divaka for giving us a clear roadmap of how a Gnani conducts his life. To an onlooker, he may not see any difference. The change is only in the Gnani's mindset, which allows him to perform all his activities, but with detachment and contentment. Swami Vidyaranya's own tripti, which he asserts with so much conviction, shines forth in these verses. We extend our deep gratitude to all our viewers for staying with us all through this transformation which broke us. Please do not miss to join us on next Monday, 30th of October at 6.45 p.m., to the concluding session of our study of Tripti Deepa. We'll be covering the final set of shlokas from 282 to 297. But now, it's time to draw curtains down for today's class with our usual Shanti Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purname Bhavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om.